The most beautifully restored boat in the world is little more than a trailer queen without a good motor to drive her. In today's video, we're continuing the work on our 1972 Sea King 35 horsepower outboard motor. We're going to be tearing into the lower unit, flushing out all the old fluids that have been in it for the last decade or so. We're going to install a water pump, and then we'll be reinstalling the lower unit to the motor leg. Let's go! The gear housing was already removed from the motor when we pulled the boat and motor out of the weeds last summer. Uh, looks like somebody had already started to at least perform a diagnosis on the motor, but never actually got around to doing any repair work. They, they abandoned it um, after they tore apart a lot of the motor. Um, you'll see that in our previous video, how much of the power head was missing when we took the, uh, the boat out of the weeds. So I'm a little concerned because where the water pump should be, it's hard to see with this lighting, but it's a little black in there. So it's a very common thing on these old outboards for folks to burn them up, overheat them, destroy the water pump, uh, melt the impeller, the rubber impeller, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've already turned over the power head and I've already gotten fairly good compression and I did run it for just a couple of seconds without the lower leg on it, but I didn't want to risk more than that. So it at least appears on the surface to be okay. I'm hoping that continues to be the case. Otherwise, I'll be stripping it down and, and possibly doing a head gasket on it. Um, so we're going we're gonna to determine that at a later date. Anyways, today we need to get our bearing cage off of the prop shaft. And we need to take a look at what's inside of here. Uh, I've already previously drained out some of the juicy nastiness that was inside it. A good mixture of water and old oil. And I know that there's still some residual. So we need to get that cleaned out and then flushed out. The gears... I can tell you they all feel really solid, so that was very encouraging. Um, I can pull the, the shift rod and activate reverse and forward, and they seem to be working exactly as they're supposed to, so we might be in luck as far as the condition of the, condition of the gear housing goes. Um, but we're, we're going to get into that right now, get all that done, and then we'll move on to the water pump. So to get our bearing cage off, and by the way, before you start this, make sure that you have pulled your drain plug and drained any fluids out of here. Otherwise, you're going to take this off and you're going to spill it all over your nice jeans. So to take this off, you have two Allen heads right here. You're also going to note that there are two threaded holes here and here. These are for the special tool that Chrysler sold uh, back in the day, specifically designed to pull this off. You can use that, you can use something similar, some sort of a modern day uh, comparative tool, but I'm gonna show you a real easy way to do it that if you're careful, will not damage anything. So first thing we're gonna do, take these out. Now I will tell you, uh, I do have a nice big bench vise sitting right here to my left and this would be a whole lot easier if I set it in the vise and worked on it there but um, it's easier because I'm trying to do this video for you all it's easier for me to just kind of have the, the flexibility to move around as needed so that I can show you guys things but if you have a vise um, at home or a couple of blocks of 4x4 four four wood that you can lay along the side and sort of prop this up in anything like that uh, makes it a lot easier to hold on to so we pulled out our two bolts. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a real sharp punch and a little brass hammer. And I'm just gonna very carefully go around the edge and drive a little bit of a gap in there. Okay, and then flip it over and do the same thing. You don't wanna do this all on one side. Okay, actually, Real quick, and I'm gonna put a rag down on my work surface because even though we've drained this, there's a good possibility that you're still gonna have some residual fluids in there. Okay, so 
once you have that cracked just a little bit, move over to a regular small size cold chisel. Cold chisels are great, but they're also dangerous if you're not watching what you're doing and being careful and taking your time, you're going to break something. So, go easy. A little bit at a time. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull the bearing cage up to the point where the seal is. Okay. And once you can start seeing the seal, it's going to be a little bit more snug. So you're going to have to give it a couple of good whacks. Just be careful. Okay, don't abuse it. And then you see the O-ring. And once you see the O-ring, you should... Well, close. Should be able... There we go. Should be able to pop that right out. There we go. Okay, so this is your bearing cage. Again, you have your O-ring on the outside here, and then you have your seal here on the inside. So we're gonna set that aside for now. And this is what the inside of your prop gear housing looks like. So this, of course, is your main bearing that your prop shaft rides on and behind there are your gears. Now again, I'm not gonna tear this unit open because I'm already very, very comfortable with the feeling of those gears. I'm not getting a lot of slop in them. Um, they, they feel very, very solid. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the biggest reason for doing this is just to get a, a good look inside, kind of observe the teeth of the gears if you're able to spin them around. You're only gonna be able to see one gear set, but it'll still give you a feel for everything. And then of course, we need to drain all that residual fluid out. So next I'm gonna go get a uh, carton so that I can drain all that residual fluid into, and then we need to work on flushing it out. So with a, an appropriate container to collect what you're dripping out, that's the residual nastiness that I was referring to. I had a feeling there would still be some in there. So we're gonna let that sit and drain for a few minutes. Once we get this all drained out, I'm gonna put some engine degreaser in there. The engine degreaser is just gonna break down and loosen up some of that residual oil and get that all flushed out. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can use a little bit of gasoline uh, in there and, and use that to flush everything out. Uh, engine degreaser, brake clean. Any of these chemicals are fine for doing a quick flush. The key to using some of these chemicals, such as brake clean, uh, degreaser, carbon choke cleaner, things like that, is that you don't wanna let them sit in the gear housing for any amount of time because some of them are not very kind to rubber seals and you don't wanna cause additional problems. Really all you're trying to do is just get a decent flush, get everything loosened up and, and drained out. Um, and then use some form of a liquid. You know, again, some, some old timers will use gasoline. Um, you can use a, a simple soap and water if you want to. Uh, some form of a liquid just to catch whatever's left and get it flushed out. And then once that's all done, you get everything reassembled. Of course, you're gonna fill it back up again with your 8090 or whatever your particular outboards manufacturer recommends for, for uh, gear oil. So I'll pause the video from here and, and uh, then we'll continue on. Um, one thing that I will point out is that we are not uh, worrying right now about the aesthetics of the motor. So you'll notice, here we go, uh, you'll notice that the motor is still its original very faded and worn gray and white color. And I've just, I'm, I'm more focused right now on getting it running than I am on the visuals. So I'm going to get all that done. Um, get the motor running, prove that it's going to be a viable engine, and then I'll worry about painting it. All right, back to the gear housing. Okay, so now we've got the gear housing all flushed out. Um, I did that off camera because it's as simple as 
flushing out the unit the way I described. You guys figure out what the best method for you is going to be. I did the method that works best for me. I'm happy with the results. So the inside is very nice and clean now, flushed out. I know that's hard to see. I apologize with the lighting, but it is, it is very clean inside and everything's moving the way I want it to. Um, bearing seems real nice. So I'm happy with that. Now, the next thing we need to do is I need to clean up the race here. Uh, excuse me, not the race, the, the mating surface for the uh, bearing cage because actually this side's rough as well. So pretty rough in here, pretty rough on the bottom side of this. And I just want to get that all cleaned up nice to ensure that I have a good mating surface so that I'm not getting any oil seepage. That uh, O-ring right here that I showed you earlier, that's going to be one part of the mechanism that prevents oil from seeping out but the other part is going to be having a nice good flat mating surface so i'm going to work with a little bit of a wire brush and um, possibly a small cold chisel if i have to and just get all that crud cleaned up and i'll i'll uh, do it on camera but i'll speed up the camera to make it go faster Okay, I should have done that before I flushed out the lower unit. Um, excuse me, the gear housing. Did not think of it. So what I'm gonna do now real quick is I'm gonna run out to the garage where the air compressor is and I'm just gonna give that a good um, blow out with the air hose, make sure that I got all that debris that I just created back out of there. Okay, good. That's clean. Inside of the gear housing is clean. Bearing cage is clean. That's done. Now, next stage. We gotta deal with all this nonsense. So, as you can see, this is pretty nasty in here. Um, most of this is just gonna be uh, using the, the wire brush and I have smaller wire brushes with my Dremel or my drill that I'll use to clean all that out. So um, that's another one of those things that y'all don't need to watch me doing. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get all this cleaned out and get all this cleaned out and see how everything looks. Um, and then we'll proceed to getting that water pump installed. Okay, so now we have our water pump area cleaned up real well. There's still some burnishing of the of the metal so it doesn't look as good as it is, but it is well cleaned up, so I'm happy with that. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to chase these threads, okay? I wanna get those cleaned out. So your water pump bolt threads, one, two, three, four, they actually go to the outside of your lower leg. They open to the outside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a bolt through and try to push any crud in the threads right to the outside. Now, you can do this with a tap or you can do it with a bolt, either or. Just make sure it's something that's long enough that you can shove some thread all the way to the outside, get all that gunk out there. And make sure as well that you're not stripping anything out along the way. Chased. Now, let me get this thing up onto a block so that we can see our water pump area better. So, water pump is not a hard install at all. This is a brand new water pump. Okay. This is the old impeller. There's a lot that you need to remember when you're putting on a wire, water pump. You're going to have your drive shaft in, okay? And on the drive shaft, you have a drive pin that mates into your water pump impeller. There's a grooved slot in the impeller that mates with that drive pin. Make sure you don't lose that when you're doing your disassembly. If you don't have one, if for some reason you've lost yours or whatever, you can use a simple wrist pin. That's really all it is, it's, a, it's a, uh, a roll pin is actually the, the more accurate term. So it's just a small roll pin. You can take one and grind it down to the, 
the proper length if you need to. Make sure you don't go too short. If you do end up making your own, make sure it seats perfectly into that notch in the impeller so that it drives properly. So that's one thing you have to make sure of. Second thing you have to make sure of is that your backing plate is oriented in the right direction. These plates have a groove here that allows water passage and it has to be put in the right way. On my motor, it goes like this. Chrysler 35 horsepower, which is what this Sea King motor is. It's actually a Chrysler. This is how it's going to mount. So you have to make sure the orientation of your backing plate is correct. Next thing you have to remember is when you put your impeller in, you're going to install your impeller first into your water pump by spinning it in a counterclockwise direction. And when you spin it in a counterclockwise direction, you're going to make sure that all of your fins are bent the same direction. Okay, so make sure you spin that in counterclockwise on installation. I'm going to pull that back out for a minute because I'm not quite there yet. Okay. Now, the next thing that you need to know is sealant. So we're going to use a little bit of Permatex high tack gasket sealant between our water pump backing plate and our mating surface on the lower leg. We are not going to use gasket sealant between the water pump and the plate. It's, I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, debate in the motor community about this, but the manuals do not call for gasket sealant between the water pump body and the backing plate. So we don't seal that. We're going to put sealant between the backing plate and the lower leg, and that's it. Lower unit, excuse me. So, when we go to install everything, we're gonna make sure we put a little bit of oil on all of our seals. Oh, by the way, seals, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. So, you're gonna have a seal around your drive shaft, right? So make sure that that is there and in good shape. You're gonna have a seal for your water line where your water line on your uh, lower on your motor leg is going to mate with your water pump. You're going to have a seal right here where your drive shaft goes down into the lower leg. Make sure that is in good shape. And then finally, you have a water line right here that's gonna be just kind of coming up into this space. So just make sure that is uh, clean and clear of any debris. If you don't have compressed air, just put a long screwdriver or a wooden dowel or something through there and just make sure that it is well cleaned out before you install all of this. Okay, with all those caveats, let's get to work. Now we're gonna put our plate on, line up our holes. Okay. I'm gonna put just a little dab of oil, like so, on the end of the drive shaft, just a little dab, it's all you need. Run it around a little bit, and we're gonna run that through, down through the seal, okay, like so. And there we go. Now, Hopefully you can see, but here is that pin that drives the impeller that I was telling you about earlier. Okay. Make sure you take note of that. Also make sure you put the correct end of the drive shaft in when you uh, assemble everything. Okay, now I'm gonna take and put our impeller with the pin gap down and put it into our water pump again by twisting it in a clockwise, or excuse me, a counterclockwise, sorry, counterclockwise direction, like so. And the objective here is to get all of the blades spinning approximately the same direction. You don't want any, you know, some of these are a little stiffer than the others. You don't want any of them flopped back the opposite direction. So just make sure you're taking a good look at that and have them all flexed in the same direction. And when you're doing it, spin it counterclockwise, okay? Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on our seal, 
trying to do this where y'all can see. A little bit of lightweight oil in that seal and you're going to need it when you go to put that shaft on. Or when you go to put it on the shaft. I can't talk today. Don't mind me. Okay. And now just begin dropping it down onto your drive shaft. Make sure that you don't destroy your seal in the process. Also make sure that you line up your pin, your drive pin on the drive shaft to where you think it is on the impeller so that you can slide right down, which is what I've just done. Okay. And there you go. So that part is installed. All right, so I had to interrupt the video because the fasteners that I had that I thought were for the water pump, again, keeping in mind that this whole assemblage was disassembled when I got the boat, um, turns out they, they must not have been for the water pump because although they were the correct size and thread, they were not the correct length. They were actually a little bit too short. So I had to run down to the hardware store and get appropriate fasteners, um, which I now have. And note on the fasteners, the beveled style head, that is designed to sit into the beveled hole of the water pump. So before you run your fasteners in, you're gonna grab your sealant that we used prior to this step for the uh, water pump seal, and you're gonna coat, coat the threads of your fasteners with that sealant, okay? And that's just to aid in having uh, no water loss through the threads, essentially. And then run them down before they have a chance to dry. We'll get those torqued down in just a moment, but first we wanna get all of our bolts coated and in. comfortable with that. Now close up your sealant so that doesn't dry out on you. And there we go. Water pump is on. Okay so now the next thing we need to do is put our drive shaft retainer onto the top of the drive shaft. And hopefully this is something that you've not lost during this process. So we're going to put just a little bit of our lightweight oil on that inside race. Just a tiny little bit, work it around, okay? And then with the cup of the retainer to this end of the drive shaft, the upper end of the drive shaft, just slide that on. To get it down, seated nice and even, grab a deep well socket and a rubber mallet and just give it a few friendly taps. Make sure it's going on straight. Okay, make sure you're not bottoming out inside your socket either. Okay, and goes on to about there. Okay, there we go. And that is it. That's the water pump and drive shaft installation. Okay, now we're moving on to the next part. Now for the next part, we need to put our prop bearing cage back on. Remember, this is the unit that we take off of the gear housing right here. So before we put it back on, we're gonna grab our lightweight oil. Again, this is one of the most valuable tools that you can have in your shop is a uh, a nice little oil can with some clean, lightweight oil inside for all these, all these uses that you see we find for them. Okay, I'm actually gonna put just a little bit right on that inner seal as well. Okay, just to make sure that that is clean and lubed. All right, 
and just slide that over your prop shaft. Make sure as it goes down that you're not crushing the O-ring or knocking it out of its groove. Okay. You can take your rubber mallet. Again, I'm trying to show how to do this without all the specialty tools that marine mechanics have in their toolkit. So I'm trying to show you how to do this with just the, the regular everyday tools that you would have around your shop. Rubber mallet hopefully being one of those tools. Every, everybody who has a, a shop or even just a simple toolbox should have a one or two good rubber mallets. Rubber mallet and a dead blow hammer would be even better. Okay, two bolts into the bearing cage. Run those down and snug them down. One and two. And I always like to I always like to tighten incrementally, going back and forth between the fasteners. There you go. That one's good. And that one's good. Okay. And there you go. Prop bearing cage is on. Keep in mind, we still have not filled up our gear housing with oil, so before you do any running of the engine that's going to be spinning the prop shaft, make sure that gets filled up with oil. Okay, now the next stage is to take our uh, lower unit gear housing assembly and reinstall it on the motor leg of the outboard. Here we go. Now before we do the installation of the lower unit onto the motor leg, I have to do a little bit of cleanup. The mating surface on the bottom of the motor leg is corroded and kind of rough. So I need to scuff that down, make that better. I'm going to do the same thing to the uh, water inlet pipe right here. Just get the end of that about an inch or so up the pipe cleaned up really well so that it uh, slides cleaner into the seal on the water pump. Okay, that's pretty good. She's a little rough, looks like it's been banged around a little bit, but I'm happy with that. Now, grab yourself a piece of emery cloth and work on that water pipe a little bit. And that shouldn't be too hard, it's just copper pipe. Copper pipe cleans up real easily. Okay, that's great, just like that. Now, when we put the uh, lower unit on, we're gonna be looking at three things. We're gonna be looking at the drive shaft, of course, which will go straight up the center, all the way up to uh, its union spot at the bottom of the power head. We're going to be looking at the shift linkage, which is going to go up through this hole here, and then I'll show you the other side of the outboard once we get to that point, what it's going to look like, but you're going to feed it up through that hole. And then we're looking at the water hose and that, or water tube, and that tube is of course going to go into the seal on the water pump. This is the one that you're most likely to damage something with if you're not careful, because you're trying to feed this metal tube into a rubber seal. So you're going to want to be careful. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there like I do everything else just to make that insertion a little bit easier. The drive shaft will be a piece of cake and then we have to worry about the uh, shift linkage and I'll show you what we're going to do with that on the other side like I said in a, in a moment. All right, I'm pretty certain I can do this with one hand. We're about to find out. So drive shaft. Right up into See right up in there? Okay, drive shaft up into there. Shift linkage then needs to come up. And sorry about that. And right into the hole like this. Okay, so now just those two things, you get them lined up properly 
you should be able to slide in. There we go, slide in pretty easily. So now, see how that seal on top of the water pump, come on, focus right there, right? Right here, this is the seal on top of the water pump. That's gonna need to slide over the water tube that we just put some oil on. Now I'm not gonna be able to hold the camera to show you this, I'm just gonna have to get it done and then hopefully you will, uh, when you're doing this yourself, you'll understand what's going on. And this is what we look like with the lower unit assembled onto the motor leg. For the fasteners, to assemble the lower unit to the motor leg, you have four fasteners, one, two, and two on the other side in the same spots. The bottom two here are easy to get to, straight shot so you can use a drill or a long screwdriver but the top two they're kind of tucked in between uh, what the manufacturer considers to be a skeg and the bolt so you can either use a stubby and get that tightened down really tight hard to do like this with one hand but you can do that or if you want a little bit better leverage you can use a 90 degree phillips um, or flathead or allen head or you know whatever whatever the appropriate tool is for the fastener that you're using and you can get that in there and just tighten those down so i'm going to tighten those down off camera so that i can use both of my hands and then we'll come back and pick it up now the very last thing we have to do to wrap all this up is reconnect our shift linkage coupler from the upper unit to the lower unit using this double threaded coupler the double threaded coupler is a larger size up top for the larger size shift lever and a smaller size on the bottom so it's hard to get those confused if you do end up taking this off or if you've lost yours and had to buy a new one what i do is i run the coupler up about half to three quarters of the way up the threads on here that way we have enough room without interference to get our lower unit installed without the shift lever uh, hitting anything and then now that it's in there it's going to be tough to show you without my hands getting in the way but you're just going to back that back down onto the lower uh, shift lever. The thread on the top is a normal right-hand thread. The thread on the bottom is a reverse thread, and that is intentional so that you can uh, turn it one way or the other, and it will thread appropriately on each of the two rods rather than one at a time. Well, folks, that is it for this stage of the project. I hope this was beneficial to you as we put together a lower unit, gear housing, um, new water pump, water pump seal, and installed the lower unit onto the motor leg. Stay tuned for the next video. Take care.